Warning, you might find the content herein disturbing, but the truth must be revealed. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programas offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com barra oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Mana nechtrudgut alon hilir gartag. Zashli chayig suprememastertv.com tashu zoros schedule. By the end of April 2020, at least 20 meatpacking workers in the USA had died from COVID-19. 6,500 others had tested positive or been quarantined, and 22 major meat and poultry processing plants had temporarily closed their doors. In a Facebook Live interview, Dr. Gary Antone, the U.S. State of Nebraska's Chief Medical Officer said, if there's one thing that might keep me up at night, it's the meat processing plants. The End of Animal Husbandry, Part 1 of 2. Continue watching to find out more. Rao means hello in Kinyawanda, the official language of Rwanda. I am Louise. The people of Rwanda are grateful for your being connected with nature and taking care of the animal friends. Welcome to part one of our two-part series, The End of Animal Husbandry, where we'll examine the frightening relationship between animal livestock raising and global pandemics. Since early 2020, much of the world has been on lockdown in a violent effort to curb the spread of the coronavirus or COVID-19, one of the worst pandemics in recent history. This virus, believed to have started in a market in China where live animals are sold for consumption, is zoonotic. That is, it can be transferred from animals to humans. COVID-19 seems to have originated in bats, was then transferred to pangolins and finally to humans. Once it jumped to humans, COVID-19 became extremely contagious. Despite China's bold actions for quarantine and other hard efforts to tackle the virus, it had spread to almost every country in the world within two months. In the USC, most businesses were closed, and 95% of the population was following the country's stay-at-home order. The only services remaining open were those considered to be essential, such as healthcare facilities, pharmacies, and grocery stores. Another industry also deemed to be essential was meat processing. Even in the best of times, working conditions in a slaughterhouse are extremely hazardous. Meat and poultry employees have among the highest illness rates of all factory workers. Almost all of the jobs in a slaughterhouse are on the assembly line, where thousands of workers labor elbow to elbow for hours on end. Social distancing is impossible to practice on an assembly line and in the cafeteria and locker room. In an abattoir, 
employee absenteeism is highly discouraged as it disrupts the flow of the assembly line process. As a consequence, even when they feel ill, workers hesitate to stay home, fearing they might lose their jobs. With COVID-19, this practice of going to work while ill has become extremely problematic, as was the case for 55-year-old Miss Grant. For 15 years, Miss Grant worked at a poultry processing plant in Camilla, Georgia. Recently, however, she felt feverish for two days and her family begged her to stay home. On the third day, she received a message from the poultry plant asking her to return to work. Fearing for her livelihood, Miss Grant went back to the plant. However, she had contracted COVID-19 and later passed away in the hospital after fighting for her life on a ventilator for more than a week. Miss Grant's son, unable to be by his mother's side, watched on his cell phone as his mother took her last breath. Before long, employees in several other meat processing facilities became infected with COVID-19 as well. In late April 2020, 300 of the 3,700 employees at the Smithfield Farms plant in South Dakota, USA, tested positive for the novel coronavirus. Within days, the number of infected workers and those they had interacted with had swollen to nearly 900, making it the largest cluster of COVID-19 infections in the nation. At this point, Smithfield Farms decided to temporarily close its Sioux Falls facility. The plant, a massive eight-story facility that operates 24 hours a day, slaughters and processes 10,000 to 18,000 pigs a day, an average of 5 million animals a year, and is responsible for 4 to 5 percent of all pork production in the U.S. Then meat processor JBS announced it was temporarily closing its beef processing plant in Greeley, Colorado, USA, and sending its 6,000 employees home to self-quarantine for an indefinite time. The announcement came after four of the plant's employees died from COVID-19 and dozens more tested positive. This plant is also massive, producing about 5% of all the beef slaughtered in the United States. Soon after, Tyson Foods Inc. and Cargill Inc closed their meat processing plants after dozens of workers tested positive for the virus. And at a Purdue Foods plant in Coughlin, Georgia, 50 workers walked off the job fearful that they had been exposed and concerned about taking the disease home to their families. Plants in Georgia and Pennsylvania then shut down when a high proportion of their employees tested positive. By the end of April 2020, the United Food and Commercial Workers Union reported that at least 20 meat packing workers had died, 6,500 others had tested positive or been quarantined, and 22 major meat and poultry processing plants had temporarily closed their doors. In a Facebook Live interview, Dr. Gary Anton, Nebraska's chief medical officer, said, If there is one thing that might keep me up at night, 
is the meat processing plant. We'll take a moment now to listen to an important message and will return shortly. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Noble viewers, welcome back to our program. In April 2020, the temporary closing of many slaughterhouses had an immediate effect on the factory farms that ship their animals to these facilities. In the U.S., 99% of all meat comes from animals raised in concentrated animal feeding operations, or CAFOs. If these massive farms are enabled to ship animals to market, they quickly become overpopulated and the operators start to euthanize their excess stock. Poultry are the most vulnerable as they are forced to grow quickly and are usually shipped to market 45 days from birth. According to the U.S. Trade Association Delmarva Poultry Industry Inc., one factory farm recently euthanized 2 million chickens deemed to be in excess. The next most vulnerable type of livestock are pigs, who are also made to grow very rapidly on factory farms. Political leaders from Iowa warned that if the state's slaughterhouses remained closed, producers could be forced to euthanize as many as 700,000 pigs a week. COVID-19 has shaken our world, but in fact, humans are not the only ones suffering from a pandemic. Recently, millions of domestic animals have also died from global virus-induced illnesses. Although these recent diseases are not transferable to humans, they have been highly lethal for factory farmed animals. In late 2014, a deadly strain of avian influenza H5N2 swept through commercial chicken, turkey, and egg producing farms in the US. Within a year, the disease had killed an estimated 50 million birds. Then in April 2020, a new highly infectious and fatal strain of avian flu H7N3 was discovered on a commercial turkey farm in the state of North Carolina, USA. The outbreak killed more than 1,500 turkeys. In an effort to curb its spread, all the remaining turkeys at the farm 32,577 birds were euthanized and buried. Meanwhile, in China, a deadly pandemic has been occurring among the domestic pigs. In August 2018, the first case of African swine flu was discovered on a farm in China's northeastern province of Liaoning. Over the next year, the disease spread quickly across much of the country, killing as many as 220 million pigs, about half of all those raised in the nation. Infected pigs suffer high fever, loss of appetite and diarrhea, and their internal organs begin to swell and hemorrhage, causing their skin to turn red. Death usually occurs in less than a week. 
there is no cure for African swine flu, and once an infected pig is discovered in a herd, all the animals are euthanized, with their carcasses being either burnt or buried. Other countries are deeply concerned that this virus could quickly spread throughout the world. In April 2020, a highly lethal virus called Decapod iridescent virus, or D1V1, was discovered at several shrimp farms in the southern province of Guangdong, China. Wu Jingong, a shrimp farmer, told the South China Morning Post, The infection rate and the lethalness of the virus are terrifying. It only takes two or three days from detecting the first infection for all shrimp in the pond to be killed. The virus, which is contagious and has an 80% mortality rate, has already infected about one quarter of all the shrimp farms in Guangdong. There is currently no way to prevent its spread. What is happening in our world? What is all this death and destruction trying to tell us? Supreme Master Shinkai has warned us many times that when we kill others, either animals or humans, we create immensely bad karma for ourselves. In an April 17, 2020 call with a member of the Supreme Master television team, Master explained that the current COVID-19 pandemic is a direct karmic consequence of our actions. She further explained why during this pandemic much of the world has been locked down. Yes, Master. To say karmic consequences each other wrongly, like we imprison prisoner of war, we just start war for any reason and imprison people and the, the animals. You can see they are locked down all their lives and then die a horrible death at the end. Yes, yes, Master.
cannot be escaped. Mm. You got it now? Yes, Master. Is there something more that we can do to help people lessen the karma somehow? You can change it by taking dramatic counter reaction, okay? Ah, uh, yes. What's this counter reaction? It's go total vegan. <laughs> so simple. Go total vegan. It's like if you make a mistake, you go south, yes. but you want it actually to go north and just you turn and go right to the north. Yes, Very Master. Simple. Many thanks, Supreme Master Ching Hai, for your continued guidance on how to save our planet through an immediate shift to a vegan lifestyle. Magnanimous viewers, thank you for your company today. Please join us again on Tuesday, June 9, for the end of Animal Husbandry, Part 2 of 2 when we'll learn about some exciting new businesses that are leading us to a kinder, more compassionate vegan world. Coming up next is Selections from Chakat Guru Adi Shankarasharya's hymns Shivananda Lahari, Part 2 of 2, right after Noteworthy News. Wishing you and your loved ones safety, excellent health, and continued spiritual upliftment. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash show.